Flight Sports TV, man. That's my dude. I rolls with him. You heard what the man said. It's Flight Sports TV. What's going on, people? It's Flight Sports TV. I appreciate y'all for checking with me. Y'all already know what it is. We back with another one of them things. You already know, as always, an unbelievable encounter whenever we can discuss, get into the mix of Leangelo Ball, G3, G Hancho. There's so many things to discuss involving Jello. We all know the history, but Today's present day, I believe, is a lot more unbelievable than a lot of people are letting on. Something tells me I'm getting a feeling upstairs that when this is all said and done, that Leangelo Ball would have made the right decision in moving his basketball career forward out in Mexico. I'm telling you, when it's all said and done, there's a plan in place. Jello's not out here just you know, uh, for, you know, his good graces. Shout out to the Ciba Copa. Shout out to the Astros. D. Um, Jalisco, you already know what it is. Um, these guys have embraced him. They have plastered jello on everything. I mean, from billboards to timelines to just about everything. And this is almost reminiscent of the Greensboro Swarm days. But something tells me that Jello is going to get a lot more burned than a lot of people are letting on. We are going to see um, how Jello is used, you know, out here for the Ciba Copa, for the Astros. They have some pieces. I've been evaluating, you know, the Astros and what Jello is going to be involved with out in Mexico. As I'm evaluating his team, Jello has a lot in common with so many of his teammates, um, so many other players out in Mexico. You got guys that were knocking on the door of the NBA. And for whatever reason, whether it was injuries, whether it was this, it was that, you know, they uh, never got to where they ultimately wanted to get to at the moment they wanted to get there. So there were obvi obviously different obstacles and avenues that they had to take, and we are seeing it firsthand, them taking it. Um, you know, I've seen guys knocking on the door of the G League. We all know Jello spent extensive time out there with Greensboro. Um, I've seen guys that play for the Delaware Blue Coats. The list goes on. Um, and I think that these guys are going to have an ultimate you know, similar goal at the end of the day. Um, you you hear guys like DeMarcus wanting to pretty much kiss the NBA goodbye. I believe everything Leangelo Ball is doing is to be recognized by the NBA. What a lot of people don't understand is when you're dealing with the triple Bs, whenever you're dealing with Leangelo Ball, you know, um, all of the eyes, the eyeballs, the attention, they're going to follow, ladies and gentlemen. So Jello could be playing in Japan. He could be playing um, in Istanbul. I mean, uh, 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 anywhere. You understand that the eyeballs, the attention will follow. You understand? So clearly this was a great move for him moving to Mexico and pursuing his NBA dreams here where, um, like I said, this showed a lot, and even to NBA scouts, because nobody's there with you, you know, um, you don't have, um, I don't ever see LeVar, you know, uh, yet, 
but I haven't even seen, obviously, there's no Mello. You don't see Lonzo. So clearly, it, it shows growth by LiAngelo Ball. If I'm an NBA scout, I'm seeing, you know, a grown man right before our very eyes. You know, he always was that, but the moves and the, that he's making is showing you that he is serious about the game of basketball. He will dedicate his life to the game of basketball. He has already done that. You know, um, and to pursue his dreams out in Mexico when clearly, you know, it, it, the opportunity for him in in the G League right now in this present day was not probably budding to the, his liking. You know, Jello, he should be able to get his pick of the litter out here. You understand? Um, clearly, that wasn't the case. But, I mean, at the end of the day, it is what it is. All you got to do is pick up your pieces, and that's what Jello has done. He has had injuries. He hasn't made any excuses. You know, um, he pretty much just gets himself together and get back on the court. And we are going to see it firsthand. The type of game that Jello brings, it, it he can play it anywhere, you know, and he definitely has an international game. You know, Jello has a lot of versatility. You know, um, his – playing style, the way he shoots, the way he can come off screens, things of that nature. It's going to fit the international game. And as I'm evaluating the three-point line, maybe if I'm mistaken, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, I think the three-point line is a little bit sh – um, is slightly a little bit shorter than the three-point line. Um, I'm going to double-check in a second. But um, as I'm seeing it, I, and that's a major advantage if that's the case, if LiAngelo Ball – is able to have the three-point range right there like that at his disposal. You're talking about it's about to be a, a massacre out here. Or I mean, I ain't going to lie to the people right now, ladies and gentlemen. We can literally see LiAngelo Ball go out here and act a fool, you know, uh, point blank period. We've seen it before, and this is a debut game. We got to do our homework with LiAngelo Ball with, get, with debut games. Do I have to take a trip down memory lane, ladies and gentlemen? I don't, I don't, we're going to take trips, ladies and gentlemen. You know, we've we, we seen what he did, you know, um, every single time. And don't discredit what he did. I think right now in Greensboro, we are going to see a combination of everything from LiAngelo. Um, it, all Jello needed was the opportunity. Uh, he doesn't come out here to, you know, Guadalajara if the opportunity is not there. You know, a lot of people are wondering, why would Jello, why this, why that? You know, and I want to let everybody know there is NBA caliber talent, you know, in the Ciba Copa. You know, and I'm not just saying this just to say it. I just told you Jello has teammates that was involved in the G League, you know, um, similar. That's what I'm saying. You got a lot of guys with similar backgrounds who went through a lot of the similar circuits, just different, you know, avenues. Uh, that's why I think Jello is in the right place. You know, with people, a lot of people that he's gonna have in common with, and um, I, I would, I gotta evaluate because I don't want to jump the gun too soon. But I want to hope that out here internationally, they they gonna play team ball. They know that what Jello is bringing. You know, like I said, if you look at all of the information, like I said, the entire media page, Jello is all over the place. You know, all over the place. So they clearly understand what what this what this kind of caliber of a player could do for not only, like I said, not only is the Astros, you know, promoting them. You got the Ciba Copa doing it. They know what this can bring, you know, to Mexico, you know, um, to De Jalisco, you know. Uh, so it, it, this this could be massive, you know, uh, a massive partnership when it's all said and done. Uh, they just got to do right by Jello, and I believe they will. You know, um, you know the tickets is gonna do what it's gonna do. You know, point blank, period. Um, so it is what it is. So y'all just uh, stay posted. Uh, Leangelo Ball is about to do his thing like he always does. Um, I, I definitely want to see, like I said, his teammates uh, to see how they play alongside of him. I think that's going to be one of the million dollar questions, in my humble opinion. Uh, that's going to be very key, you know, uh, d depending on how Jello can bring it, you know, and, and that's it's going to be big time, y'all. Uh, make sure you hit the like button and most definitely hit the subscribe button. Um, I got my man Marquez in the building. What's the deal, Quez? Shout out Jake Simpson, twin. All y'all in the chat, man. Shout out to y'all. Can you hear me? Am I good? Am I good? 
Am I what good? you say? Was? Good. Did you say something? Testing. Oh yeah, you good now? You How you doing, man? Right. Appreciate appreciate you for stop for for coming through. You know, um, you see what's going on. Um, did, did you ever get your thoughts on um as we get ready and pumped for Jello? What what's your thoughts on Jello coming out to Mexico? What what was your early thoughts about that? Honestly, you know, I was a big propon proponent early of allowing Leangelo to kind of. I was very adamant of allowing Jello to go play overseas because Jello, it's different now for Jello. You see what I mean? It's different when you have family involved, kids involved. You kind of have to want to put yourself in the best situation for your sons to succeed. You know what I mean? And I'm going to be honest, like the Charlotte Hornets, up until that point, look like they wasn't really giving Leangelo an opportunity to begin with under underneath Michael Jordan's uh, regime. Hopefully, I feel like that can change because of this new regime that that, uh, that, uh, that we have. But so far, man, I'm just happy for Jello, still balling, still chasing his dream and taking it one step at a time, man. It's not a mar it, it's a it's not a mar it's a marathon. It's not a race. You know what I'm saying? So I'm very excited for Jello to come in here and come in here and play. Uh, there's been plenty of professional NBA guys who have actually went overseas and come back. You know, guys like Nico Mann, who was who played in the league and is now overseas. I think it's going to help Jello get that exposure because the problem with Jello was he had the makings of being a good player in the league, but it was the it was the organization. He never had an organization, in my opinion, that actually would give him an opportunity, you know. And until somebody can give you an opportunity, you got to go where you want it and not where you need it, you know. And right now, Joe's in the perfect situation to where it could be a Stephon Marbury type of story where if he plays his heart out, plays his heart out, and they win, you know, it's going to be because of Jello, you know. The Mexican League, you know, I'm not really 100% sure about it. I thought maybe he would go do is better. Is it because we don't go got go. a lot of information? Is it because we don't got a lot of information on, on the Mexican League? Um, it's, it's, I've it's, heard it's about a professional the league. league. It's a professional league, but I just haven't heard. It hasn't created any NBA prospects. So Joe is kind of coming into a situation and he could really make this organization a game changer because I'm 100% sure he's giving the green light. We've seen what Jello can do, you know. And also, Mexico, he's still in California. Mexico, if we're being honest, fight, if we're being honest, Mexico City is not that far. From California, it's actually relatively close. So it's not like he has to go all the way out to Serbia or somewhere to play basketball. He's relatively close near the U.S. to where he could play his game here. And if, God forbid, something happens to his son or anything happens, you know, I want to say, I also want to say congratulations to that, Jello being the father, because wow. You know what I mean? Like, that who would have thought that that the the, the actual thought process of saying Jello is a a father is just crazy that aspect and I think that with that maturity to his game I think that like Lonzo he can make that next step step forward in the progression of his of his career and proving some of his doubters wrong you know so I'm rooting for Jello tonight let's see what he can yeah. do. I mean, uh, what, I mean, it's much better than whatever was going on with the Greensboro Swarm. You know, that's what I'm saying. It, and, obviously, and, and well, go ahead. It's aggravating, but let's we you know this is fight sports TV, and and we gotta we gotta and we gotta just pull up some of the, these uh these these facts. The NBA D League, in my opinion, when it comes to development, the NBA D League is the 
problem of it come when it comes to the development developmental league. And here's what I mean by that, right? The G League at night is what the Danes came out the last two years, getting these younger players and finding them a chance to play in the NBA G League so they can make themselves better and more prepared for the league, right? Fight. Right. That's all mm-hmm. good and all, but outside of who? Jalen Green, who's eh, you can debate on how Jalen Green is when it comes to professional. You know, he's a great shooter, but when it comes to that heart or effort or that second chance effort, I don't think he has it. And that's just me. I think when it comes down to effort and when it comes to the league, you cannot teach effort guys. And it's those effort guys that are going to always last longer in the end than those guys who go out there and shoot pretty boy jump shots. And it's not really evolution to the game. And this is why I have a problem when it just comes down to the G League. There is no way that the XFL, that any of these other sports are developing their players in better leagues than you are. And if it comes to the point now, Flight, that the NBA, I think we should boycott the G League. Because majority of these young players who get drafted outside the top 15 gets outside the top 15 get shifted down there to the G League anyway, stuck in developmental hell without an opportunity to get a chance by an actual team. Meanwhile, they give these guys who they play fight thirty million dollars or more, i.e. a James Booknight, i.e. a Zion Williamson, i.e. a Brandon E. Ingram, i.e. a I can go on. There's plenty of guys out there that we know and we respect and that we love, but there's always kinks in the armor. And these guys out here, let me ask you a question, Flight. I think Matt McClung is being blackballed from the, from the NBA. This man has won two well, you back-to-back NBA. This yeah, he's stuck in the G League. You're right about that. Two back-to-back dunk contests, which – when you look at the dunk contest and its impact back in the day, Vince Carter was a good was 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 a, was a dynamic was a dynamic wing player, but people gave more, gave Vince Carter more of his respect when it came to him balling out in the dunk contest. You see what I mean? And it kind of gave him more of a a notoriety that kind of helped his career. Vince Carter was still getting jobs, right? Until he was 39, 40, and, in, and there's no shade. But when there's clearly there are players that they keep in the league even when they're past their prime. And I'm sorry, but I can – Matt McClung, and I hate to say it, is a lot better than majority of the last year's NBA draft and this year's NBA draft outside of Wimby, Wimby and Brandon Miller. And I hate to say it, Scoot Henderson is a bust. He I, – I, Scoot Henderson is a bust. They traded away the Portland Trailblazers, traded away Damian Lillard to a a championship contender while their team is losing and sucking. And in my opinion, it's this player empowerment that is feasting on the league. And it's it's also, I don't understand. I don't get it. Why is the NBA doing this? Why Why are you not allowing players into the league who not only can play, but they are dynamic. And they're also coming from the G League, which is an underdog story, and it boosts your ratings more. But I don't understand why the NBA can just throw up in our face the NBA draft like it's the most important thing of the year, when in reality, majority of these guys are going to get stuck in developmental league, in the de- developmental G League, and be stuck there for a the majority of their so, careers. So, so do you it's think a lot of these players need to follow Jello's route, you know, playing internationally? You know, a lot of players have found, you know, uh, amazing careers internationally. I, I look at a guy like Stephon Marbury. This man got two statues out there in China. They was clowning him in America. He don't even want to ever come back. You understand? That's just one example. You know, uh, we've seen a lot of people. We like, we just seen DeMarcus Cousins just say, Mommy, what was it, a day or two ago? Um, I'm Ginobili through with the NBA. got drafted because of his, his overseas, right. pro- overseas production. Right. So so overseas play is, 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 is big time. It's definitely a, a base for that. 
you know, and like I said, there's going to be eyeballs watching. Like I said, Jello could be playing anywhere. They're going to be, I'm telling you, people are going to be interested in what's going on with Leangelo. That's just what it is. The ball, the ball family, the ball name brings in controversy within itself. Where do you like them? Where do you hate them? Where do you love them? That's not what, that's not what the matter is. The ball family and the ball family name has changed programs wherever they went to. The JBA, Lonzo Ball going to UCLA. He changed that 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 team and changed that dynamic to get them to the tournament. To Lamelo Ball, his first couple of years trying to fight in and out of in and out of uh, pl- uh, in uh, the play-in series with arguably one of the worst teams in the NBA. And I'm saying it, they are the worst team in the NBA. When it comes down to having guys that can all shoot well, but none of them fits their scheme. Brandon Miller has been the only piece that can fit with LaMelo scheme-wise. Everybody else had to go. Book Knight is no longer here. P.J. Washington is no longer here. Is Terry Rozier no longer here too? Did Terry get traded? Uh, Terry is gone. Uh, they did some spring cleaning. Mm. Terry's gone too. So now you have Steph Curry, a bunch of guys who can play. This is really what the Charlotte Hornets team is right now. It's Miles Bridges and a bunch of of of, of bench players until Lamelo can come back and gel with Bridges and Miller until they can somehow, some way, bring in a star to Charlotte. The only way you can bring in a star to Charlotte is doing a move that I'm sorry, regardless of the league like it or not, Charlotte had the perfect opportunity to get all three ball boys right there at disposal. Whether or not Lonzo was to be get there the first year or the two years until his contract with the Bulls, it was a way that he could still come here if the Charlotte Hornets just did their job and proved that they were a, a good organization. But the problem is, is we go to good organize we go to bad organizations expecting a chance. You can't get mad at the bad organization for making bad moves and not showcasing. It. That's where it falls on Jello. He should have left after that first year. He should have never went back after that second year where they continue to haul him on the G League Swarm team, which, by the way, Book Knight and Kai Jones, who were clearly passing him off the ball, by the way, that we talked about on Flight Sports TV, them two idiots are no longer in Charlotte Hornets uh, uniforms. I was saying that, Marquez. I mean, look at the people that Jello had to deal with. You know, people who literally had no value in the organization, and you've seen it tenfold. So I mean, this is sad. And it's and it's it's it, it's sad because Jello. Okay, I think they're taking it, and here's why I say that the NBA is making it hard for Jello to get into the league because he he we're not talking about guys who actually has we have NBA players that we love, adore, and respect have had multiple essay allegations and many things on their on their, on their their list, which are career enders, if you ask my opinion. When has stealing Gucci's sunglasses in China affected a person's entire NBA career up to this point? Meanwhile, James Booknight was an NBA, NBA first-round draft pick, and he was drunk in his car. I'd be with a mysterious uh, instrument in his hand. I'm not going to go into what that mysterious instrument was, but he got arrested for it. Again, probably one of the other reasons why James Booknight is no longer here. And the only saving grace about that entire organization is LaMelo Ball. Because in my opinion, uh, Flight, Miles Bridges needs to go. Miles Bridges, after seeing these last two games against the Milwaukee Bucks, which I've actually sit down and watched, Miles Bridges doesn't move the needle. He brings no plus minus over. He brings no stat over, which leads them to winning. He doesn't. And in my opinion, Bird, they should have let him walk. You know? 
it's already bad enough that it's already bad enough that there is that they let things slide over and over and over and over and over again. But you got guys in the league uh flight that, that, that show lack of effort every night. That still NBA contracts every single day they go out on that basketball court and perform. Tobias Harris would not be in the league if it was 10 years earlier. That's a fact. These lack of effort guys, the Zach Levines who don't push the needle, the DeJounte Murray's who don't push the, the, push the needle. All these guys making all these moves. It's like, come on. The NBA is becoming a bad product because they keep relying on this player empowerment. And it's because of player empowerment flight that Leandro, Leandro Ball is not in the league. It's not because of the organizations, and it's not because the it's not because the conglomerate, and it's not because the 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 monster that's the NBA holding them back. No, it's the player empowerment. Because James Booknight and Kai Jones took wide open, double covered, double contested three point shots, and Leandro Ball was cut open underneath the paint for a layup for a two. These kids don't even got basketball IQ anymore. They just shoot long half chuck threes, play half-ass defense, and think that's going to make them be great or goats in the NBA. The NBA, it's, it's sad, like, but there's no way that all these offensive players playing now and no defense. It's no way Leandro Ball's a uh, a defensive liability, like a not like a Tobias Harris. You're six foot seven for nothing. Ben Simmons, defensive liability. That's uh, it's just sad. Like it's sad. I mean, like I said, it's just you damn right. It's sad. It just don't make no sense. Um, but I, I posed a question to the people before things get started that when this is all said and done. I think we're gonna think we're gonna all come to the conclusion that Leangelo made the right move, what was best for him. You know, uh, what do you think about that? You know, in terms of possibly even an uh, NBA, you know, invite to summer league. You got that coming up. Uh, I just think it's a serious method to the madness here. I, I don't think this is just you know just just doing things just to do it. I feel, you know, I just I feel as though that I think right now, for Jello, you know, for Jello, he needs to establish. He needs to establish a resume overseas, and once he establishes that resume overseas, flight. It's very possible he can go on to a summer league team and maybe even make an NBA roster if they just give him an opportunity. Because there's guys in the NBA, I even on, on one of my favorite teams that, if I'm being honest, don't need to be there. If you're asking me right now, Flight, if would I rather have the Nasses or Leandro Ball, I, I would take Leandro Ball. That's just what it is. If you're asking me, would I take Leangelo Ball over Josh Giddy? I'm taking Leangelo Ball. And Josh Giddy's a starter, by the way. I'll take Leangelo Ball over Kyle Lowry. You know what I'm saying? Like, there are guys here who, dare I say, are past their prime. But there, nobody's talking about their decline because of their name. Kawhi Leonard hasn't made a playoff healthy in four or five years. How can he ever be one of the greatest small forwards in his decade if he can't stay healthy when it matters the most? You know, this is what we're talking about here. 
We got it. And there's a lot of people on the cloud tonight, Flight. I really hope they come onto the platform. I really hope they do. Because I've been hearing a lot of nonsense. Okay? People talking about Leandro Ball is this. Leandro Ball is that. He's not a better defender than this. He's not a better defender than that. When these guys talk about the, they know who they are. I just can't wait for them to come on the platform. There's no reason we're 30 minutes in, right, Flight? And the people who are normally on here haven't shown up today. Why is that? Because they're afraid of the smoke. We're not running away from the smoke today. This is a real basketball organization. This is a real basketball take. Nah, man. Like I said, you're really right, man. It is what it is. It's Jello. Like I said, we get, we supporting Jello no matter where he's at. Um, no matter what. It is what it is. You're right about that, though. A lot of people, like I said, a lot of people trying to find the stream. You know, like I said, Jello's in Mexico. So um, things aren't always like, uh, let's just, like I got to say, like I said, it's not always fast. Like, it, it, just have everybody be patient. Things will be. You know, on the way. Yeah. You know, like, there's no streaming deal. There's no uh, network that's um, putting this out. Actively covering the Angelo Balls games as of right now that we know of. But we're here just discussing. And yeah. he has a game today. So we're going to make sure we're going to check the stats because I'm pretty sure X is going to drop the stats or. Whichever way comes forth, or if I can find a way to, to yeah, win. that's right. Oh, dear, or, um, oh, uh, what's the chances you know Jello does well, you know, in this season and he gets an invite to the summer league? Because I think that'd be you know perfect if that was to happen. Well, what's the chance? In my honest opinion, I say it's a 60%. It's a 60% because people are going to – 50% is going to be because of Jello and his talent. The other 10% is going to be what do NBA rosters need, what can they fill in that position, and if, do they have that position filled already. That's what it's going to come down to when it comes to Leandro Ball. Being, a, being as talented as he is and also – Having that opportunity that the NBA says we looking at rosters and saying, you know, we might actually need this guy. Whether he's coming off the bench or you believe whether well or not, hey, he's a starter in this league. You know, fifty percent. No, I'm with you. You know, um, obviously it won't be back with Greensboro. Oh, absolutely not. And if I'm Jello, honestly, if I it come back the second time the around. It's not going to be anything with no bum teams. It's going to be going towards looking at teams who are contenders and going to those summer league teams and seeing how much my talent can get me there. Because I know for a fact that some that Jello can take spots for some of these G League at night teams that honestly don't deserve to be on the basketball court because they make so many bad plays. IQ wise, it's ridiculous. They don't deserve to be here. Bottom line. And the people saying that, oh, Jello's not an NBA player. Is James Booknight an NBA player? Is Scotty Pippen Jr. an NBA player? Is Sharif O'Neal an NBA player? Is Matt McClung an NBA player? No. But you know what the difference is? All those guys had better opportunities to go out and show their skill set and talent, and they laid the goose egg. They laid the goose egg. The Angelo Ball never had the opportunity. This is the first time I can say since what? Since his Lithuania days? Where you can honestly say, Jello playing overseas is the best thing for him. In my opinion, also, another thing, he should have never left. He should have stayed a year in Lithuania, at least. 
no call for the draft six months after your incident. When there's already a pariah on not only your family's name, but the actions that you may have caused because you're bad and decisive being that young of a player. But it's okay. You get older. You know what I'm saying, Flight? You get better with age. It's not just about Jello no more. It's about Jello taking the time out with his family and putting him and his family in the best position to succeed. That's what it's about. Hornets are a scummy organization, and they better hope that they treat LaMelo with some damn respect. That's what it is. What's the best fit for here. Jello in the NBA, in your opinion? Right now? Honestly, Jello could go to a team like Milwaukee, the 76ers. I could even see him playing, honestly, in teams that might actually need the bench help, probably like a Portland, too. And the reason why I say that is Milwaukee has guys that are on the nine to ten man roster. I can see Doc Doc him coming in and proving he's better than 12, 11, and 10 to get some time into the games as well. You know what I'm saying? But every single place I have him in is LiAngelo Ball coming off the bench. That's where I have him at. He's going to be a solid bench player only because people will not know how to use him, will not know what's going to happen. He will not know these things. I'm expecting LiAngelo Ball to be a bench somebody's bench a year and a half from now. And somebody said in the comment sections right here, JT, Seth Curry has been in and out of the G League. And if Seth Curry can come in and out of the G League and be successful, so can Jello. It all comes down to which team is going to give Jello that chance. But don't wait for a team to give you an opportunity that might not never come. You know what I mean? So you have to be prepared, prepared for everything. And that's why I'm saying Mexico City is a great place to not only build your own legacy, but to get NBA offers to look at, look at you. Because a desperate team, a losing team, will find a way to bring in some type of attraction to help numbers. And I hate to say this, LiAngelo Ball is a great talent, but people have been using LiAngelo Ball for his name not for his actual actual basketball talent. When is a team going to say he's more than just bringing numbers because of his name? True. It doesn't hurt that Seth's older brother is one of the faces in the league. You could also argue, Flight, right, that LaMelo Ball was pushed and is still being pushed as one of the many young faces in the league. They just don't want him in Charlotte, in my opinion. They don't want them in Charlotte, and they do that to all the small market teams when they have a player that they have and they have determined as a star for their team. He is 25 years old. Steph Curry, Steph Curry got the league when he was like his late 26, late 26 years old. So, yeah, man. And Lonzo, too. Lonzo Ball, who... I can't wait to come back because he's gonna he's gonna be a game changer for the Bulls. Hopefully, his injuries is doing well. From what I'm heard, he's running again. That's a good thing. You know. And I heard some things, but I'm not just gonna share, share, nor can I confirm. People are saying that he suffered a setback, saying that uh, he's not able to sprint right now. I don't know how 100 percent accurate that is. So I'm not even going to put that on Lonzo. And um, it's just no reason why this roster is as crappy as Charlie is. And LiAngelo has to go overseas when there's one team he can play on. And they can actually give him the minutes and opportunity, but they just don't want to do it. They want to keep losing. With overrated players past their prime and one superstar. It's not going to get done, Flight. It's not going to get done.
Yeah. Everybody doing the chat. Yeah, man. Shout out, um, shout out to the chat. I'm over here trying to, um, I'm just having some. I'm trying to figure this shit out right quick. I got a couple of obstacles here, but I'm, um, I'm, I'm getting that. Yeah, I'm trying to find this, find this, uh, this, this game. There's just so many things around the league that we can talk. Oh man, who? I'm gonna make some LeBron. I'm gonna make some people, a lot of people, mad tonight. I can feel it, fight. I'm gonna make a lot of people mad tonight. Yeah, like a, lot of said, to, a lot of guys need to step up to the altar. <laughs> like, <laughs> you got 40 old people stat patting, and they try to still call them the greatest of all time. Like, who does this? Like, just say the truth. Stat patterns. The NBA is about stat patterns, shot chuckers, and flashy pretty boy jump shots. NBA does not care about fundamentals. They don't. Did you see that game last night, Flight? You, the you, heard, you heard Kawhi Leonard say that. <laughs> what Kawhi say? Now he says something about the fundamentals. It's just none of these guys have the fundamentals no more. And a lot of these guys think they can come in and do the same thing they've been doing and think they can go and step foot on an NBA roster. And it's naive for them to think like that. Because they think because they're an NBA first round draft pick, they are able to are supposed to get an opportunity because they're NBA first round draft pick. And a lot of NBA first round draft picks fight never amount to nothing. Which is why I ask teams like the Knicks, the Thunder, who got all these draft picks, right? Will all these draft picks be better than the players that you're playing against right now? That's a very serious question to ask. Are all the draft picks that people have traded up for and traded star players away, are they actually worth it? How many of those players are either going to be top five talent players or how many of those players are going to be bucket gifts for your team when they first come into the league? A lot of them are not. A lot of people fight. One it. It was either Wimbiana or Wimbiyama or bust. People didn't even pay attention to Brendan Miller. Wimbiyama or bust. LeBron James or bust. Kevin Durant or bust. You go after these star players and these guys, which I understand. You have to win now. But if you're not winning, you know what I mean? It's like, bro, how many draft picks are you going to hold on to? Until you make a move. The R.J. Barrett trade, eh, that R.J. Barrett trade still bothers me. You know what I'm saying? Like, the Knicks trade away R.J. Barrett for O.G. Adenobi. O.G. Adenobi is what you trade your third first round pick for. He didn't even win last night. He didn't even win last night against the Knicks. They didn't win against the Warriors. They lost. You got to get guys, man, that can fit your system and can play for you right now. Why are we going after guys and draft picks that, dare I say, won't even make your roster in two or three years? Huh. Let's go. Let's see. Trying to find the Nah, nah, you're right about that. Yeah, good now. Trying to find. 
Okay, now I know this boy ain't got nothing. OG's a way better fit for the Knicks than RJ. Okay, Mr. Mr. Okay, this is why I hate when people say this. Okay, is OG out of Nobi gonna win you a championship? Is he a needle that can put you toward championship contention? I'll wait. They'll trade OG out of Nobi, Jalen Brunson, their top bottom dollar to get Kevin Durant or a star right now. So don't believe that. Okay. We have, okay, looks like he's in the game. He's still trying to find the stream. Yeah, man. Uh, uh, the game is going on right now as we speak uh, for anybody that's uh, tuned in. Yeah, it's just live recaps and scores. Yep. We got Marquez in there. We just um, really discussing Jello as he's um, making his debut out here in Mexico, to be honest with you. You know, there's a lot of things to discuss, break down Leangelo and his journey. Uh, today, he takes another step in that journey. So we're here to document it. Also, uh, you know, I think, you know, we should talk about the elephant in the room flight. And I think you know what the elephant in the room is flight. A big fat, overweight, beignet eating bum over there in New Orleans, Zion Williamson. Yeah, yeah, you thought I was going, yeah, yeah, we're going after those players tonight. Zion Williamson. That we're gonna find that out with the Clippers. We did hear LeVon Ball say he want to see him with the Clippers, so we're gonna find out. Ooh, I actually like that. that be a I can see him playing with the Clippers. Um, to be honest with you, just back in the NBA. To be to be honest with you, I think that's the end goal. We just right. We just want Jello in the league. Where he belongs to make his own his own way. Will he get an opportunity to play with his brothers or not? But we want that opportunity for him to, to play into the league. Also, Flight, the um, I looked it up. The three-point lines in the Mexican leagues are the same as the NBA three-point lines. I just checked it on, a, um, on, their, on, on their, uh, their, their website. Let me see if I can find.
That, that, that's what it's all about. The game is definitely not on any local channels, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I bet after this situation is done with uh, Leangelo, he will be. Unless you. Yeah. He's going to get his another opportunity. You know. Where. I mean, we're. Yeah. You know. At the end of the day, we're here. We should be expecting more people to come in. But, but for right now, you know, we're looking at the tip-offs and everything, you know. The Astros are really, again, really are the teams that are – they're a team that are kind of in the middle. This is me just looking at their roster right now on their website. They're kind of in the middle. So he could, again, still come in here and – Shout-out to everybody. That's, uh, Shout-out to Ruben, King C. Um, you know, everybody that's in the chat. Uh, Rocker with Leangelo. Um, like I said, he's, he's yeah. going to take his Mexican debut uh, right now. It's going to be the first of many games. It's going to be a whole lot more. You know, the first one is always kind of hectic. Um, I remember when Jello was out in um, the G League, people was um, going all over the world trying to figure out where this and where that. Um, and like I said, they, they definitely was a – it was a it was a good look when it was all said and done. After it was all done, G League games became a lot more accessible, you know, and a lot of people was able to view them. And like I said, we're gonna see something similar just like this. Uh, we got some. Trying to see if the stats can update on this on their website. Right now, we have, and that game was nineteen to fourteen. Leangelo Ball so far flight has played two minutes. And he's actually playing for them right now as we speak. Uh, we speak fight. He's in the lineup. Yellow ball is in the lineup. Second period. Updates that I am getting um, from the game so far look like um, right now look like the Astros is winning seventeen to fourteen. Oh, okay. As far as I, I've seen. We'll keep y'all posted. Keep y'all posted. There are no, I'm gonna say this again. We're gonna repeat ourselves again. There are we are not able to stream the game. It is in a different time zone than what than what, what the time zones we are experiencing on a normal NBA night. Please and thank you. This is FIBA. This is overseas. Some predictions right now in the chat. You know what you expect Jello to drop in his first game. How many? How many points you think he's gonna drop? Points, assists, and how many minutes he gonna play? Trying to get as many um, updates that I can give to the people as I possibly can. The. Back to my rent. Zion Williamson is a bust. I've seen enough, like, I've seen enough. I know you're not going to agree with me on this. I've seen enough. Zion Williamson on, is a guys. bust. Huh? I'm, I'm, I'm scouring the, um, the field right now for the people. We got right yeah, now it is. Update after update. 
Like I said, I gave you a score update. That's crazy, Foy. Hey, Foy, how do you feel about his minutes? His minutes total. This is the most he's played. You know, it seems like they're they're trying to feature him a lot. You know what I'm saying? This is what Mexico TV channel is it playing on, or is it even time? That this is this is like I said, it's going to be streamed. But um, like I said, I'm not going to lie, I'm having a hard time finding it. Uh, I'm just getting some updates um, right now. I, I told the people uh, the first quarter just ended. So um, I had some avenues that um, I got a got remix right now. But there will be coverage. It's just not coverage the way I would like to the way I would like to do it. I don't want to um, get it right for the people. But more than likely, I definitely will. Like I said, there will be updates and shit on on what's going on with Jello. Like I said, it's the first game of the season. Pulling up for Jello whenever Jello is playing, you know. So that's key. You know, um, definitely. Uh, if you're a Jello fan, make sure you hit the like button and, and you hit the subscribe button as well. You already know. Shout out Terry in the chat, JT, all y'all. Yeah, but so far, I, so far, you know, it's, I'm I got second quarter on my screen. Yo, my bad. I might have had you on mute the whole time. Yeah, uh, oh. I was on. Um, I think I might have been on mute. Okay, I, I want to go mute talking? myself. I go ahead and send me. Um, it is a uh, twenty-three uh, sixteen in the second quarter fight. What of the game? Of the game. Uh, where'd you get that update from? I got it from the official website. Uh, yeah, that's what I, I seen it too. I seen the first quarter. Yeah, I, I went to the website and then I just checked the stats. I got his live stats. I got the live stats right now. So whenever they score. It gives me their updates. You got Jello stats? Yeah, I got Jello stats. Pull up right here. He only played uh, right now. He's only played four minutes and uh, twenty seconds. No points. No rebounds. No assists. That, that's good updates. So, so I'll keep y'all updated. But uh, I gotta talk to you, fight. Because let, uh, let, let's keep them updated too. I, I, I'm scouring the field to make sure we could we could get something, you know, concrete. True. We'll make ahead, sure our, our we, we, we got play. some. We got something. It's just not the way, you know. It's not how we want it. Right. The Jello That's is out there. I'm, I'm getting updates too. I'm giving also images of Leangelo. Ramirez. We never said Jello was going to be starting. I just have we just have his minutes up here, and he's only he's played four minutes or thirty six minutes. Right now, Jello is playing for the for them right now as we speak. He's still in. He hasn't been pulled out yet. So that's the uh, that's the hard part, man. I really you know. I really wish. I thought he was going to go to the NBL first, right? Because, you know, with Melo actually yeah, been over there, you know. But the Mexico, Mexico League, it's okay. Got to make it your own sometimes. Right, you got to do your own thing. You can't always have got You can't always rely on your brothers, you know, trying to play with your brothers because sometimes you might never get that opportunity, you know what I mean? And, you don't want to leave with your basketball career with no regrets, so that's the most important thing. Now nah, I'm with you, though. This is this is not a top. <laughs> like it's I not said, even Jello. top. Makes the league, and it and ah. Well, I ain't gonna lie. I don't, I'm not familiar with. Uh, like I said, he says it's not the top. All I know is that this is a professional Mexican league. This is a professional basketball team. You know, he's a professional. 
And and so it's I, all about what this thing could springboard off of. You know, I doubt that Jello is is looking to retire here. Oh, here we go, Sky. Sky, don't so make comments tonight. like that, Sky. You better come up on this platform because I've been wanting to, want to talk to you about your sorry behind Pelicans for a long time. You and your, your you and them dirty birds, bro, be ducking me. But respectfully, I don't want to hear it because how does your number one draft pick? Only scored eight points in 21 minutes. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it alone. Don't get upset. Don't get frustrated. Don't get mad. Eight points in 21 minutes versus the Pacers, and you're supposed to be a number one draft pick? Miss me. Then you dropped 23 points against the Pacers the game before. And I'll digress. It, 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 it's not about Zion. It's not about the Pelicans. It's not about that. I'll digress. Pelicans, man, mediocre. And we got Jello could have helped crazy. the Pelicans. Be your teams. Jello could have helped out Zion, the Pelicans. He, he would have fit perfect with Ingram. No, 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 no. You know how I say no fight? Because they tried They tried with Lonzo Ball. And look how that worked out for them. Right. I mean, they wanted Because to, to their mindset and their Lonzo aspect, Ball, you know. I got that's what I got too. On his screen, it, I got his some of his stats right here. They yeah. say he's uh, his three point is 0 for two. I can confirm that his three point is 0 for two. Jello took two threes. Two threes, yep. I'm just yep. I'm just confirming what chat is saying while also making sure it's true. But again, for like six minutes, he's getting his time. They letting him run. Did we're gonna find score? out if they time to determine that. Well, what's the score? Yeah. It's 26 23 with uh four minutes and 47 seconds left to go. 26 to 23. Yeah, I see Jello right here. Um some more and more images. Jello got another game tomorrow too. Oh, it's a back to back for him. Yeah. Yeah, we, we know what the score is. We got the score up. We're just trying to make sure that our, our stuff is accurate. We want to give y'all the most accurate most accurate information. That's uh, fact. Shout out uh, Marquez. Salute. Yeah, man, like I said, Jello is, is definitely, like I said, is wild, man. You know, this whole Angelo situation is crazy. Yeah. Yeah, but we, you know, OKC, OKC is I'm saying that too. OKC, the Thunder, they're a team that could beat uh, a contender if the contenders don't play up to their 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 standards. Joe has been subbed up the game, and the score is thirty to twenty six with four minutes and three seconds left to go. Joe's just got out of the game. Joe is off the off the court. But he has a plus minus right now of four. So, you know, that's a good thing. His plus minus is is up. And he got the second plus minus on the bench. So, that's a good thing. He's not starting with, you know, 0-2 from 0-2. 0-2 from three points. So, I got to score 30 to 26. Yep, I can get from that. 30 to 26. 409 left to go. Hello, everybody in the chat. You know, 
Hulu. Hey, if I got questions, I need to answer. What well, is this question? I said, uh, I'm just telling chat, you got any questions or answers? Just put them in the chat. All right. I'm up here looking, looking at what's going on with Jello, the things they got him listed at. Got to make sure all this stuff is accurate. Right. Hold on, let me uh, see something else. Bryson. Oh, they got a guy, Michael Bryson. Um, he played in um, G League as well. He got five points, four rebounds. <clears throat> you got a guy named McKinney. He putting up 13. Going off with 13 points. Yeah, he's a guard. And he, he got E. Sloan Jr. That name sounds familiar, D. Sloan. Name sound familiar. I could be wrong, but that, that name do sound familiar. I could be wrong though. Yeah, those guys that, that, that are in right now, Bryson and McKinney, they're the starters. Right. Hey. Gutierrez. Oh wow. Gutierrez is just doing everything. Two rebounds, two assists, four points. They got the best Bryson look like. He got the – nope. McKinney got 13 off the bench. McKinney on the bench with Je Jello. McKinney got 13 off the bench. Yep. I'm, I'm looking at it now. I got – um. I got 36.29. Yep. 36.29. Yep. Okay. So let's see, let's see if the Astro. Well, what I did evaluate was Jello's team is like one of the better teams in the league. In this league, I think they was first and second, I think, for the, for the past two years. So they're very competitive. They're, they're, you they're they're up there when it comes to competition. They're competitive enough to win. Yep. So far right now, you know, there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's 10 teams in total. So in this league, it's 10 teams in total in this league. So. It was crazy. So they were champions last year. Yes, that's what I'm saying. So it was good that Jello went to a winning team in the league. Yep, actually got uh, actually got some winning experience. Who him? I said the uh the the team actually got winning experience because the championship. You know, because his last team don't know nothing about winning championships. They can barely make the playoffs. But I digress. Right. Let's check. Let's check. Let's check. It seems like it's going to be a replay, to be honest with you, as, uh, as I'm looking at it. A replay of good not playing Jello again? Yeah, they'll probably replay the whole entire game. Probably have overtime come and drop the footage. Yeah, not even the footage, like uh, maybe to uh, stream the whole game. Yeah. After the shit is over, so we got to know it's not the NBA, so shit, shit ain't crazy. Shit crazy. Oh, a lot. Gonna My Bucks is winning. My Bucks is winning. They beat the brakes off the Hornets out of there. They beat them too, but yeah. Uh, but the Watch. first one was filthy. Right. 
So that was wild. I mean, it's this Dame and Giannis, you know. I guess clicking and Adrian Griffin, it really what I would say it really was a coaching issue. When when guys don't want to give you effort, it's normal because they don't believe in what you're what you're giving them as a coach. You know, as though as it sucks, as it may 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 seem, Adrian Griffin's team gave up on him. I, I truly believe that Giannis and Dame and Bobby and all those guys gave up on them because how they look under Doc Rivers, they look like a problem. And they're going to their hardest schedule of the year. And you don't want this team fight in the playoffs with their identity. They they blow out they blew out the Nuggets and they blew out the uh they blew out every contender they need to blow out, including the the, uh, the Celtics. So now it all comes down to is can they stay healthy and can they keep this around? Keep this play up. That's all you can do. All you can do. Shout out to G3 and taking his talents out to Mexico. You already know what it is. So as I have a feeling LaMelo will sit out the rest of the season. He should. If you mellow, are you coming back, Mark Wise? No. I just got destroyed. Yeah, by, by a bug. Twice. Twice. And then I just lost to the Sixers tonight, and they made – Tobias Harris looked like he was the looked like that he was a, a man amongst boys. It's ridiculous. No, if I'm Lamelo, if I'm Lamelo this off season, and I know fight, we don't want to have to say this, but this would be what his second, third is it his second or third year into his contract. Because I think Lamelo needs to. I don't want to put this out here, fight, but I think Lamelo needs to leave. Hornets are going to waste his prime, just like how they did Kimber Walker. And when Kimber Walker decided he wanted to leave and go to the different teams, it was too late, and he was already past his prime. That is what Charlotte Hornets is known for: getting somewhat decent players and then running all their point, getting the, getting their their superstars, i.e., Larry Johnson, and running them into the ground. Like, ask any people in this chat about Larry Johnson or Muggsy Bowes. You know what I'm saying? They're going to look at those guys and say those guys aren't good, but just those are the guys that are the most famous ones to ever wear your jersey. That's a problem. That's a problem, man. They got to get fixed. I don't see the Hornets getting fixed. You know. That's a big problem. It's just I just it's like fight as 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 much as we want the Hornets to succeed and and to and to take LaMelo to the promised land and do all that all great and kumbaya as great as that is. Got to be honest, it's still the NBA. Glenn Rice, thank you, Terry, in the chat. He said, Glenn Rice, too. Charlotte is known for wasting capable players that you can build champions around and just not using them in their proper way. And that's just an organization issue. And I don't think the Charlotte Hornets is going to change that, that mindset. Even with a new regime. Because, like, we're trying to tell these people, and we're trying to tell the fan base, you should be happy by just winning a couple games. They're trying to go and have their expectation on the play in. And then when they don't make the play in, it's like, how bad are we when we can't make the play in? And that's a very valid question. How bad is the Charlotte Hornets when you can't get past the Atlanta Hawks, which, in my opinion, is a worser team? 
I think the Charlotte Hornets are better than the Atlanta Hawks. Even with the John T. Murray, they're still a better team than the Hawks. When LaMose and Bridges is out there on the floor, including the addition of Brandon Miller. That's how much I believe that they can get into a playing spot. But I digress. I don't know. That's a tough statement, man. It, it, it's not tough. Like, it's just the truth. Flight, you're a New York Knicks fan, right, Flight? You're a New York Knicks fan. That's right. That's right. And if you are in the Hornets situation, right, you got Jalen Brunson, who seems like he's the piece to build around, and you got guys out of here who don't deserve to be on the same court as him. Are you going to trade those guys away as soon as you realize they're not good enough for helping your team? Gordon Hayward, Terry Rozier, P.J. Washington wasted years on this roster before they even left. Years. Years fight. But Mel's been in the league since 2019. I'm sorry, 2018, right? That's 2018. No, 2019. Because 2018 was uh, John Morant and uh, Zion Williams. He has been in the league. And he's the only saving great about that Hornets roster. Hornets are garbage. Book night. They wasted Book Knight when he was good. You should have traded away Book Knight away, got your draft picks, aim for a superstar. See, the problem is the problem is with player empowerment. Because player empowerment, you see, back in the 90s, Dennis Rodman can go from the Spurs to the Bulls and become an instant championship contender because of how player empowerment wasn't affecting the trades. But now because of player empowerment, Everybody can make as much trades as they want to. So it it's fickle, man. It really is fickled. It really is. But we got some um it is officially halftime. The Astros are up thirty eight to thirty two in the second quarter. Um, Leandro Ball hasn't scored any points. Played 16, six minutes so far. So hopefully Jello can get on the bucket board. Everybody like, like up the stream. Ooh. Yeah, it's crazy. It's just like, wow. What are we gonna? So, how you been? Uh, how you feel about your Knicks so far? How do you think the Knicks can? Uh, I'm gonna ask you a serious question. Do you think the Knicks, with the talent they have, do you think the Knicks can they beat the Celtics? Oh uh, no. Probably, probably not. Really. Even yeah, though the Celtics is known for, for choking? What are the Knicks known for? Running up against Michael Jordan and losing? <laughs> That's what they're known for. No, you can't Knicks really are... call it a choke. You can't really call it a choke if you just have a guy who's just dominated the entire era, an entire era of basketball. Like Magic and Bird dominated the eighties. Kareem dominated the seventies. Then you had Bill Russell and uh Wilt dominating the fifties and sixties. I don't agree with that. Uh, I don't agree with that. Uh, studio. I think you can't with all that money on the table with his rookie max contract extension. No rookie has ever turned down their, their, their rookie max contract extension. No rookie has ever done that. So the fact that you expected that to happen, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. 
That is what it is. It's like, and if we gotta talk about your motivation, and we gotta talk about your 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 drive and your heart and your your your, your skill set or your fundamentals to get it done, then. I don't know what to say. You can't and, and and let's put this out here too, fight because I've heard that room. I've heard that in the other landscapes and, uh, across YouTube. Can we stop blaming Lamelo for the Hornets doing Jello dirty? Can we stop doing that? Can we talk about that? Why is it that every single time the Hornets makes a dumb decision, it falls on the blame of Lamelo? It's like, bro, come on. This team sucks. He's not trying to win. If you're trying to win, you don't sign with the Hornets. That, bro, me, Flight, our grandparents, our fathers, our mothers, anybody, with $250 million is out on the table, and you want to look up at it and say no? You're crazy to turn down $250 million. Also, the Hornets have more leverage over LaMelo. Injury prone. We could really argue at that point when they gave him the contract. Is he really the guy because of how he was played in a system that wasn't designed for him to win? You know? Right. And you can't blame LaMelo for a team's bad decisions. I'm sorry. You don't do that over here at Fly Sports TV. If they're going to make it shit. The team was shitty before Lamelo got there, and honestly, Lamelo is going to have to is is going to leave, and the team is still going to be shitty. He is in four in his fourth year in the NBA with the Hornets, and they fight. They still look the same. This is the first year in Lamelo Ball's career where the regime that was in before him, i.e., the Gordon Haywards and Terry Roziers and PJ Washingtons, are gone. Let that sink in. Cody Martin. Still on the roster. Ed Smith, still on the roster. Book Knight's DUI. Kai Jones saying he can go out there and saying he can play better than the starters on the Hornets team. And I hate to say this, Flight, maybe he was right. Maybe Kai Jones was being blackballed and saying that he couldn't play in the starting lineup. But in my opinion... Kai Jones was better than JT Thor, who's still on the roster. Yes or no? Uh, I listen. No. I mean, Cody Martin's JT better than. I mean, Book Knight's better than Cody Martin, but you have Cody Martin still on the roster. I can't say. I can't say all that. You moving to say? What? Fast, I'm just being honest. It's honest. Co- what does Cody Martin bring that Book Knight didn't bring when he was? At his peak. No, no, no. Damn, they're one the same, you ask me. No. But I digress. It's hard. Like, it's hard to talk about the Hornets because they don't give you, uh, they just don't give you enough to make you want to care because they don't care. So, how are we supposed to care if you don't care? No, nah, you're right. And you can't blame. And we're gonna do this too. Fight while we in here. You can't blame Michael Jordan for the team being mediocre for what it is. Look at what Michael Jordan has done for the city of Charlotte. Look about this. He bought a team who wasn't even in Charlotte at at this point. He bought the team. When they were still in New Orleans. People forget that. When Michael Jordan bought that Charlotte Hornets team, they weren't even in Charlotte. They were in New Orleans. But the fans say it's Michael Jordan's fault. It's MJ's fault for not putting out a better product. It's MJ's fault. It's MJ's fault. It's MJ's fault. fault. MJ's just the owner. He writes the checks. What about Mitch Kupchak? Do 
this team's net worth wouldn't be what it is without Michael Jordan. Because let's be honest, their team is shitty. Their product is shitty. But Michael Jordan's the saving grace. Why? Because he's Michael Jordan. The only basketball player to own an NBA team, which nobody has done up to this point. But believe it or not, MJ was the worst owner in the league. I do not agree. Trust me. There are way worse owners in the league. They know who they are. MJ hired Mitch Kupchak. He did. He did. I'm not saying he didn't. It's 50% MJ for not making that move to get rid of these guys. Mitch Kupchak should go. And respectfully, Steve Clifford, as good as he is, he should have never had a second opportunity with the Charlotte Hornets. Because he was here with the Charlotte Bobcats and they were still shitty. But again, what do we know? The dude couldn't make the playoffs. Neither did Steve Clifford, but he, he but neither did Steve Clifford. But he's but he's a coach. MJ hired Steve Clifford. Fly. Are we gonna can we tell them how MJ actually went into the hiring of Steve Clifford? Because Steve Clifford was actually an option that MJ didn't want. Because MJ originally wanted Kenny Atkinson, who stayed in Brooklyn. And look at Brooklyn's record. In my opinion, he just he just didn't want to go there because of the the threat of what Michael Jordan being as an owner could bring. Michael Jordan, I truly believe while he was there, preached the accountability. And when he sold that team, Bert, it was him telling himself that he tried. He tried the best that he could. But when you have a shitty culture and a shitty environment and a crappy and a crappy market, and the only reason why he's making money majority of the time is because of you, then what can you stand on? The Lakers had the Lakers had Dr. Jerry Buss. Who, before he got there, were winning when they were in Minneapolis, right? So they have a culture of winning. He came in, he put his own flavor and institute on it, and then they won championships. He went out and took the big risk, got the big fish, and the Hornets will never do that. They will never go out their way and get a big-time name because guess what? They're scared, and they play scared. They draft scared. They don't try to go out to the sheer fire thing. And as great as Brandon Miller is, the fact that Charlotte didn't get Wim Benyama when they had the worst record in the league outside of San, San Antonio Spurs is another problem with itself. Well, we, it's, what can you do, know. man? It's just... What can you do? I know it might sound like I'm contradicting. I know it might sound like I'm just talking or I'm contradicting myself, but that's what the epitome of this Hornet organization is. Inconsistency. MJ wanted Kenny Atkinson, who was in Golden State. But he rejected the offer and stayed. So MJ couldn't go into the NBA offseason without a head coach. But if MJ wanted to make the move he wanted to make, he could have went out there and got a Mark Jackson-like coach. Not a Steve Clifford. Who, despite taking this team to a playoffs, was never good enough to get past the first round. It's about championships, man. It's not about trying to be people's friends. And that's where these NBA teams are starting to fall. Stop being this. Stop trying to be these players' friends. If they're trash, they're trash. If they're trash, they're trash. Bottom line.
So, um, what's up with your Bucks, man? You still rocking with the Bucks, or did you get a new team? Yeah. No, I'm still rocking with the Bucks. I'm still a Bucks fan. You know, you know, I, I, I figured, you know, I figured fight. I was with them when we were still winning and losing bad, and now that Doc is here, mm. I'm going to root for them because I've been rooting for them all year. Um. Yeah, I don't like how they do it. Nothing else can man. be said. Yeah. You know, nothing else can be said. I like. I told you, flight that uh Patrick Beverly was going to be a move or a game changer, and he's he, he's been that. The energy, the effort is what we've been lacking, in, and that's what he's brought. Danilo Gallinari is another tall guy. I'm very excited for that, and I just can't wait for the playoffs, man. We got 23 more games left, and honestly. People can laugh and hate all they want to, but there's not many teams that can beat the Bucks when they're healthy and they're clicking like they're clicking. There's not. Not anybody in the NBA East. Nobody in the East anyway. Celtics are mediocre, and the 76ers are choke artists. Also, Nick Nurse has to – I'm going to say this. Nick Nurse. You left Toronto. You were fired from Toronto. You had the Milwaukee job on the table. You had the Milwaukee Bucks on the table, and you picked the 76ers. You, sir, are bum. You, sir, are a championship off the carrying and the backpedaling and the load management that is Kawhi Leonard. And the, and the emergence of spicy TP and the emergence of bread pen fleet. That's how you got your championship. So I digress. Ain't no really good coaches in the uh in the in, in the east right now. And Doc Rivers, how he's playing right now, top three. Top three East coach. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, studio so so tired of those lame ass NBA now. None of these teams are worth watching. Nah, you got a point, man. I mean, but this was we knew this was coming when you when you went to the <laughs> shout out to Chuck Morris. But we knew this NBA was struggling when when you got teams winning championships, and I don't want to be this guy and say this, but Jokic winning that championship, honestly, can I be honest? I didn't feel anything. And even I know Nuggets, and it's like, yeah, we finally got, the, got that ring off our backs, right? I don't think the Nuggets have truthfully improved on their championship roster. I think it's still the same roster. There aren't pieces in there that can help. There aren't any new pieces that can help with the, the upgrades of the other teams. The Bucks later got Dame later and took a big swing. The 76ers got Nick Nurse for head coach. The uh, Celtics got Drew Holiday from, from Milwaukee. You know? I just haven't seen the big trade or moves that the Nuggets have made to make people – i.e. watch them or care. It's not like I don't like Jokic as a player, but Jokic plays boring. I don't want to make this up. I don't want to be rude to the former MVP. But... The Nuggets, man, are just so, man. I'm not saying Jokic is not a good basketball player. I'm just saying that Jokic is boring. 
He plays boring. He plays stiff. Defense ain't really playing the best defense of his life. But it's it's offensive progressions that just make you, I guess it makes the world eye how good of a player he is. But Jokic is boring. So. What do you think, Flight? How do you feel about uh? How do you feel about the? How do you feel about Jokic? You think that Jokic yeah, is I, bad? Yeah. No, I think Jokic. I think Jokic is a problem because of his offensive abilities. Correct, but yeah. just, just watching the next games. The Nuggets are not. The Nuggets aren't really. They're just, eh. you know, the Lakers. In spite of them losing, the Lakers are still the Lakers. You know, the Knicks are still the Knicks. You know, the Nuggets. They won a championship and they had one of the, the and they had one of the least viewed finals. That was one of the least viewed finals in the history of the game. The Nuggets and the Miami Heat. Wow, what a great finals. You know? And I just I just don't know, man. They gotta give us a better product, bro. They really got to. I got a score update flight. We got 44-36. Astros six twenty five. We're gonna go back up tomorrow. Um, I, I, I'm, gonna, tomorrow. I'm gonna hit you up on IG. We're gonna probably work on some content uh, later this week weekend. All right. You heard? Yeah, I heard you. All right, all right, all right. Fight. You have a good rest of your night. All right, how long? Fight Sports TV, man. That's my dude. I was with him. You're with the man.